Hi there. I'm Cindy Linden, and this is a Cook Along Podcast Quick Bite. I hope you forgive the potentially inappropriate title of this podcast, but I couldn't resist the pun. Could have changed my mind, but I didn't. I thought it would be fun to share with you what I keep in my kitchen drawers because you might hear about some tools you didn't know about before. So I thought we'd just talk a little bit. We're going to call this part one because I have a lot of cool things in my kitchen and we won't get to them all in this quick bite. First of all, my kitchen, as I have mentioned numerous times in my podcast, is 1951 Chic. The counter and backsplash are four-inch robin's egg blue square tiles. There's a sort of a rim that comes up a little higher. Well, not quite the same color blue, but close. It hasn't been updated, obviously, since it was built. The cupboards and drawers are painted white, also from a long time ago. They no longer close properly. One of these days, I will be able to remodel my kitchen. They don't close properly because there's no sliders in the drawer. The drawers themselves actually slide in and out just on the wood below them. And as 70 years have gone by, the wood has worn away and created sort of tracks that the drawers sink into. It's not very fun. The cabinets mostly don't close. The floor is terrible linoleum that was probably laid in the early 80s. Hard to say. Anyway, that's sort of an image of my kitchen. My appliances are are much newer. They don't look like they fit in here at all, but they too are white, except for my toaster oven, which is silver. In the center of one wall, there is a kitchen sink. It's a double basin porcelain sink from 1951. There is a window above it, and we're going to start, I think, with the drawers to the left of that. So hopefully you have an image of what I'm pulling open. My top left kitchen drawer, it's not exactly the kitchen junk drawer. That's on the other side, and I'll share with you that one a different day. But what I have in here is a few manuals of how to use appliances, which I probably don't need in here. Some tools like pliers and screwdrivers, because sometimes you don't want to have to go to the basement workbench to get them. Scissors, a measuring tape, a flashlight, rubber bands, scotch tape, twist ties, and one ancient box of matches, it looks like, from the finest pipes and cigars, gifts from all over the world, the tinderbox. Isn't that fun? My second drawer is where we can actually start to talk about stuff. In here, I have a bin, sort of a a shallow tray that has my steak knives, my vegetable peeler, which I use an ancient metal one. You maybe can recognize it by the sound it's making there. I have a pizza wheel, which I don't use anymore because it tends to come apart. I keep having to screw it together. Anyway, it's kind of handy to have for a scoring thing. There's a cheese slicer in here. Silver metal sort of thing that looks like a really wide tuning fork with a wire that cuts the cheese. I spent a long time trying to find one of these because my parents had one. And it seemed to work just fine. Now that I have one, I don't really get it out. It's too much fuss. I just cut it with a knife most of the time. And there's a spare wire for that. Good for me. There's a pair of kitchen shears. These are handy. These are something I would recommend even for one purpose. And even if that's the only thing you use it for, it's worth having them. They're great for butterflying a chicken, also called spatchcocking, because you have to cut the spine out of the chicken. And so it takes a really sharp, really strong pair of metal scissors. And that's what these will do for you. I use them also to cut herbs. They have like a bottle opener thing on them, two kinds. There's a sort of a pliers thing to open jars. I've never used it. There's a bottle opener where, you know, you pry the top off. I've never used that either, but I do use the scissors. In addition, in this drawer, there is the top part of an immersion blender, which I keep with the knives, I guess, because it's sharp. 
the bottom part, the electric part, didn't fit in here, so it's not in here. There's also a kind of a cool pair of scissors that have five blades, and I use it to cut herbs. And so you can cut like a leaf and get five strips in one snip. That I got really just because it sounded like fun. And I do use it, but it's a little hard to use. Supposedly, it will snip the basil leaves or sage leaves or whatever without bruising them. Whereas if you just cut them, you know, with a knife on your cutting board, it sort of smashes them before it cuts them. Supposedly, this doesn't do that. But getting the leaves into the five blades of the scissors is kind of a good way to hurt yourself, I've learned. It's just a little tricky to use. I use it anyway because I think it's really fun. But it, it somehow needs a way to hold the herbs, like a pair of tweezers or something. I have in here a mandolin slicer. I don't use this very often. Once in a while, when I need something really, really paper thin that you can see through, I will use it. But I don't use it for two reasons. First, for the same reason as the cheese grater, sometimes a knife is just easier and faster to grab. Secondly, because I'm scared of the darn thing, I know how quickly and easily it could slice off the tip of my finger. So I feel some trepidation about using it when I have other tools available. There's a zester in here. I love this. I love this. If you don't know what a zester is, you should look it up online. Type it into a search because these are cool things. It's also called a microplaner. It's like a shredder that makes things really tiny. So it's great to get the, great, there you go, to get the uh, skin, the peel off of an orange or a lemon or a lime. It also shreds garlic beautifully. And if you shred the garlic rather than mince it, you get a lot more flavor because there's so much more of the garlic exposed to whatever the dish is that you're making. It's also great for cheese. Great. There it is again. For grating cheese, like if you just need a little Parmesan. It's also wonderful for grating nutmeg so that you get just a tiny bit of very fresh whole nutmeg in a dish. And that's a, a really different flavor than the stuff that comes in the jar. So that's a cool tool. It's one I recommend when you have time and resources to do it. And then I get into some knives. I have a black ceramic bread knife from Dalstrong. I like it a lot. It's very sharp. It's serrated. It doesn't get dull. It works really well. I also have a very cheap Miracle Blade number three, which is uh, also a bread knife, but it has like a fork on the end of it to grab things. I've quit using that so much now that I have the other one. I have a cake server which has a serrated edge on one side of the blade, and then it's kind of wide. It's probably an inch and a half near the handle and uh, three quarters of an inch near the tip with a rounded tip, and you slice a cake, and then you scoop this underneath it to scoop the piece of cake up. I have a Miracle Blade fillet knife. I use this on fish. I use it sometimes to carve a chicken. It's curved. It's a mean little weapon. It's got a very sharp point, and doesn't seem to get dull, so maybe Miracle Blade really does work. Oh, I should tell you about the knife thing. So it's got slots, one per knife, although I have more than one knife in one of them. It's kind of a nice way to store the knives because they are in a drawer, but they're not just loose. You're not going to slice your fingers trying to find the one you want. And then I have my latest knife acquisition, which was funny to me. It's made by Victorinox, which is the people who make Swiss Army knives. So this is a Swiss-made knife. It sounds like a crazy company to buy a kitchen knife from. But I love this knife. It's a chef's knife. I do, by the way, also have a knife block, and we'll go through that another day. This is a great knife. It's light. The handle is plastic, but it's balanced just really nicely. It's incredibly sharp. I haven't had it very long, clearly. The reviews say that it uh, holds an edge better than most knives. I couldn't get one when I first read a review about it. I wanted one, and they were back ordered, but they are back now. It's a Victorinox Swiss-made chef's knife. They run around $45. I'm very excited about it. It's a delight to use. It slices through anything very quickly. 
even tomatoes and stuff. It doesn't squish them. Actually, as long as we're talking about knives, let me see if I can squeeze in a little bit more. And we'll move from the drawer over to my knife block, where I have another chef's knife. This is by J.A. Henkels. It's a nice, sharp chef's knife, or Sudoku knife, I guess is what it actually is, because it's curved on the top. And you rock with it, and it has those little divots in the blade to help it release from cheese or whatever it is you're cutting. I liked this one very much when I first started cooking and I still use it, but I am much more likely to either pull up my brand new Victorinox one or my everyday go-to chef's knife, Sudoku knife, which is a Kyocera Advanced Ceramics Knife. It's light, it's beautiful, it's, it sounds stupid, okay? I know it. It's got a black plastic handle and the blade of the knife is white. It holds its edge. It's always ready to use. It cleans easily. You have to be careful that you don't break a ceramic knife. You have to respect what you do with them. You can't throw them around. They have no bend to them. If you do anything either accidentally on purpose where you think you're going to pry something or get it stuck under something and it bends, it will break instead. But that is my favorite chef's knife. Then I have two little pairing knives. They're identical. They are just the same as that knife. Kyocera Advanced Ceramics, little white, probably four inch blades. And I use those for everything that doesn't need a chef's knife. And then I have what I call a tomato knife. This is by Messermeister, made in Germany. It's got a red plastic handle and a little snub-nosed four and a half inch blade that is serrated. And if you don't have a sharp unserrated knife, to cut your tomatoes with. This one does a job without squishing the tomatoes first. My kids all have one of these because we all really liked them. And then I have three what I call bagel knives in this knife block. They are short. They have a sort of spatula spreader shaped blade with a little serration toward the end. There are three of them because that's what we use to butter toast, to put cream cheese on bagels, to cut cheese, to serve stuff probably actually the most used knives in my house by the rest of my family. I have one more thing from the Kyocera Advanced Ceramics family. This is a six inch blade with a really fine serrated edge. Also great for tomatoes. You can tell I eat a lot of tomatoes, but anything else that needs a serrated edge, I just prefer ceramic knives. And if you wanna know why, there is a blog on my website. I think it's called Let's Talk About Knives because I love knives, as weird as that is. And then I have one last knife, which I've been told to get rid of, but I just won't. I just won't. It is by Hoffritz Platinum Series. It's all one piece of metal, I think. It fits right in your hand, so it's maybe a four-inch handle and a three-inch blade. It is never, ever sharp. But it's this short, stubby little knife that I can use to cut blocks of cheese with because cheese doesn't need anything really sharp. And butter with and all that kind of thing when you don't need a fancy knife. I, I don't know. I just like it. I may be the only person in my family who really uses it. It falls kind of into my knife block, which is a pain, but I like it. So that's episode one of Getting Into Cindy's Drawers. I have two more drawers on the left side, which I will tell you about in the next Quick Bite podcast. So tune in in a couple of weeks to hear about that. And then I have several drawers on the right side, some of which we won't open for reasons that shall become clear. I invite you to contribute to the financial welfare of this podcast by either clicking on the Help Frost the Cake link in your Acast app or visiting patreon.com and looking for the Cook Along podcast. Please tell your friends that you're listening to the Cook Along podcast. Communicate with me on Facebook or on my website, thecookalongpodcast.com. And until next time, happy cooking. Happy cooking.